I got this in my mail earlier this week. They're called 10 percenters. So members of parliament send these out. And this one's from the Honorable Hetty Fry. And she's got this whole section on housing. And I wanted to just offer some thoughts on this because this is the federal government's initiatives on housing. They're going to double housing construction over the next 10 years with Rapid Housing Initiative 3.0. So they've been talking about this for a couple years. I'm not sure when the 10 year plan starts, but it should be a seven year plan at this point from what I can remember. And I also don't remember Rapid Housing Initiative 1.0 and 2.0 because nothing happened. But they're on Rapid Housing Initiative 3.0 and they say that they're gonna help create 17,000 homes. I've seen no work on this and it's seemingly going nowhere, certainly not in Vancouver. They've created the Affordable Housing Innovation Fund. You can get funding for your innovations to develop and test innovations that incorporate resource and operating efficiencies and are replicable and scalable, including financing, operating models, and technologies. You can get flexible financial support to test a range of innovations and leverage new partnerships. You can facilitate partnerships and encourage participation from diverse stakeholders, including private sector, not for profit. It's literally just a bunch of buzzwords. Nobody's ever gonna move as a result of that fund. Now, the big one that's coming is 2023, there is a temporary ban on foreign buyers. This is gonna be very interesting. In British Columbia, Toronto, a couple other parts of Canada, they've toyed with and played around with foreign buyer taxes. And we have a pretty substantial 25% foreign buyer tax already. So we brought in a foreign buyer tax of 20%. We raised it to 25%. Then we literally shut the border down for two years with COVID and now we're banning foreign buyers. I'm not sure this is gonna have as big of an impact as people might think, because we've really pushed the foreign buyer away. The issue in British Columbia is not foreign buyers, it's foreign money. It's people who live here, but make their money elsewhere. They own factories in China, and they live on the west side of Vancouver. That's what drives the price of housing up. A ban on foreign buyers doesn't solve that. So I'm not sure this is really effective, but it makes for a great headline. The feds are also doing a one-time top-up in the Canada housing benefit. They're gonna deliver $500 to 1.8 million renters. But you have to have a net income below 35,000 as a family and below 20,000 as an individual. This doesn't really apply in Vancouver and it's not gonna make much of an impact because if you had a $30,000 income in Vancouver, you're unlikely to even be renting in Vancouver because that would just barely cover the cost of your family's rent. And finally, they're gonna work with the provinces to implement a home buyer's bill of rights. Every time I hear someone saying that they wanna protect home buyers or make it easier for home buyers, what they're forgetting is that the, on the other side of that transaction, there's a seller. Every transaction is a buyer and a seller. And you as a buyer might want more rights and you as a buyer might want an easier time right now. But I promise you in three to five years when you become a seller, you're gonna be really upset that those rules are in place. Everyone believes in affordable housing until it comes time to sell their own home. So when you hear someone saying, like the feds, that they want to make it easier for buyers and they want to bring in a home buyer's bill of rights, just remember at some point you are likely to be a seller and you're going to be on the other side of that, which means you're going to have home seller obligations. So you can tell, I'm not a big fan of the current federal government. I don't think the liberals are doing any of the right things on housing. I think there's a lot of fluff. There's certainly a lot of buzzwords if you look at their innovation fund and nothing's really getting done that will help the housing market, that will help people who need housing that they can afford. Not affordable housing, housing that people can afford. Regular working people in major urban centers need access to homes that they can comfortably live in. And none of this stuff is gonna get them there. If you like this content, be sure to like, click, subscribe, and send it to your friends.